Hi everybody, this is our 21st Century Superhuman live show. I'm Carrie Ellis, author of 21st Century Superhuman, and today I have with me my wonderful partner on the path, my husband, Marek, and we are blended into the wall so that you can see the Hopi Elder Speaks. We've been kind of talking about this since I presented it yesterday. Hey, Marek, how's it going? I'm doing great. Buenos dias, buenas tardes, buenas noches. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Yes. Highest blessings. Thank you. So, Marek is has been translating the books into Spanish and actually doing the narration because he's a native Spanish speaker, which is really exciting. And we have ourselves blended into the wall. We feel like this is kind of fun. And um, the big question is, what does this Hopi prophecy mean to us now? Like, what is so important about this? Why would we want to even talk about it? What well, for me, if you know where we are, wh what the planet is going through, then it helps you understand what we are going through. And it gives direction. It gives direction. It gives us a pace. It gives us a place to point, to point to ourselves instead of floundering in, in the, this massive river that, we're find, that we find ourselves in right now. And what is the planet going through? What is this massive river? <laughs> Besides we, a whole lot of chaos. Well, the title of your book, of your book one, says it all. The great change of the ages, the shift yes. of the ages. El gran cambio de las eras. And it's been prophesied by the Hopi, the Maya, the Aboriginal peoples in Australia, Africa, Colombia. This is not a new thing. This is known to be coming. And so yes. um, the prophecies, other prophecies also say that those words of wisdom will come back to guide civilization. Uh, and which we've quick, quickly learned now that uh, uh, is, is an experiment of humanity, that we've been there, done that, and it's time to get back to some other things. And so the ancient prophecies are coming forth now, uh, giving us this guidance. Yes. And so that's, that's why we pay attention. Some of this has even been prophesied in The Simpsons. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> okay, well, let's, why don't you read a little bit of the Hopi Elder Speaks and we can um, talk about it. A Hopi Elder Speaks. You've been telling the people that this is the 11th hour. Now, you must go back and tell the people that this is the hour. And there are things to be considered. Yes. I feel like being very centered in our lives is the most important thing that we can do right now. The things to be considered are really important, that we center in our clarity, in listening to our heart, listening to our intuition. As I've talked about over the last week or so in some of the, our presentations, it's easy to have an old garbage can full of ancient anger, rage, grief, mm -hmm fear, and we carry these things around generationally. This is an opportunity for us to release those and to breathe, smile and love, of course, and to release as anger, rage, fear, these things come up. Um, there's another statement that we'll talk about in a few days from A Course in Miracles, which tells us fear is not even real. And so some of these ancient dark emotions, it's time for us to move into, to grow up as humanity and move into being amazing beings of light and love. You know, we, it, is, it is really our true nature. We all have them. We all have these things in our genetics, in our bodies, in our energy fields. And that's part of what we're doing is, is right now is recognizing those, loving them free, letting them go. And as the Hopi elder says, and gives us direction in different aspects, where are you living? What are you doing? What are your relationships? Are you in right relation? Where's your water? Know your garden. It is time to speak your truth. Create your community. Be good to each other, for crying out loud, you know. Uh, do not look outside yourself for the leader. Yes. Then he clasped his hands together and smiled and said, this could be a good time. I love that. Yes. That part to me is key. This could be a good time. That's an attitude. 
Yes. That's an attitude within yourself, within your heart, within your voice, within your step, the glint in your eye. This is a good time, but not if you're holding on to the shore. That's right. Right? Which <laughs> leads us on to the next section. We'll get into that next. But okay, go this, ahead. Where are you living? What are you doing? Are you following your heart? Are you being the creative being? Are you tumbling around in the chaos or are you just choosing to get into your center to begin resonating love each day and to do productively the creation that's really inside of you? And it may be finding a new path. It may be finding things that you haven't done before, what the true essence of your heart is. We were talking the other day about um, spiritual uh, awareness or um, is has been what's been thought of as being the most important. But what we're really moving into is understanding that authenticity. Mm. Illumination. Illumination. That's what it was. Right. The, the, the goal of the new earth and the spiritual beings uh, up to now has been illumination. And we're shifting. We're shifting to a higher cosmic level, which is called authenticity. Yes. Being our true selves, listening to our true selves. So these places that you've lived, these relationships you've been in, you're in, um, the universe has been guiding you all along. Yes. So which part of those has been gnawing at you? Which ones have been, you know, irking you or telling you, you need to get out of here? And you haven't paid attention to that or you haven't acted upon it because of what we call the, um, uh, the consequence uh, yes. left brain thing. When your heart guides you somewhere, it's an, it's, a, it's, it's an impulse, it's a feeling, it's that, that, that umph that you get. And it's kind of like, I'm going to shift a little bit to the side, it's kind of like getting ideas when you're in the shower, right? I, I, I like to put a meme up that says, when you get an idea in the shower, follow through, because <laughs> that's coming from your higher self. I mean, another discussion could be about the running water on your body, the electricity being created, the centering of yourself, etc. But getting back to listening to yourself, listening to those nudges that your spirit, this is your spirit giving you to go, to move. And, and if you have a big block on your head because you said, oh, if I do that, uh, this will happen, that'll happen, then you fall into that, that backlash of the consequences that your left brain throws at you when those are mostly illusionary and they don't really go down like you fear they would. Yeah. We had a couple of really interesting experiences happen in the last few days. Let me make sure my audio is on mute. Um, and one of them was um, some friends told us about other friends who, one of them has a little piece of land. And so as a group of people, they're deciding to go out onto that land and start gardening and building small houses. And they got to draw straws and see whose house gets worked on first. <laughs> And they actually have some helpers who are helping to start put the gardens in. I thought, wow, what a great idea. Mm -hmm. Coming together with community, even if it's a community garden in your neighborhood, even if it's, you know, growing things in your yard or growing things in pots. Mm -hmm. There's so many ways to begin. Are you, are you in right relationship? Are you in relationship with people where you have a mutual support system? Or is it all about the chaos? We need to really start finding mm. our grounding in connecting with others who have, who share similar vision, who can begin moving forward. Because the new earth is going to come from us. The new way of living and being is going to come from us. And no, we don't want to all be farmers and all live in little tiny houses, although we really chose to come and live a simpler life in well, a little village. And that is sort of where we're going. Yes. The, we're going, we, you know, our history says that we came from the fields, from the rural areas, came into what became civilization or the big cities. And like we said before, we've been there, done that. And so I feel there's going to be a, a returning to the simple life. There are going to be um, communities just like this that you mentioned with our friends doing, which is exactly where we're going. And there's going to be more and more and more of that. So that's, that's a good thing. Yes. So create your community. Be good to each other. Are you being good to each other? Are we being good to each other? Am I being good to each other? Because it always comes back to me. Am I throwing rocks at who I think is the opposite political party? I mean, don't we think a lot of this has just been stirred up in order to keep people in fear, keep people polarized against each other? This is what we have to move beyond because really 
we are one. Even those people that we think are the dark evil forces, even those people that we think are the terrible this or that, this is time to go into the heart to do what's called forgiveness. Well, it's us. Yes. It's us. True. The Skeksis and the, what's the other ones called in Dark Crystal? Uh, it's the same being. It's yes. us. It's not, there's no out there out there. There's no them there. And all these other things are distractions from this. Yes. This is where we need to be. So that's what I choose to talk about. I choose to think about. Uh, people ask me about the other things and I, I really don't engage. I love and send my love there for the highest good, but I focus right here. This is what we're after. Why? Because there is a river flowing now very fast. It is so great and swift that there are those who will be afraid. They will try to hold on to the shore. What's the shore? The shore is the old way we've done. It's the yes. status quo in your life. It's holding on to those old things that for whatever reason you're holding on to. And they will feel they are being torn apart and will suffer greatly. Know the river has its destination. Trust the plan. Yes. The divine plan. The elders say we must let go of the shore, push off into the middle of the river, keep our eyes open, our heads above water. What we've been doing is like surviving all these years. We've just been surviving, keeping our head above water. But then he says, and I say, see who is in there with you and celebrate. And guess who's in there with us? You are. All of us are in it together. You are. We are in the river together. We yes. have let go of the shore and feel like we're out in the abyss, trusting the divine, trusting the plan. And yes. And you and I have both done a lot of letting go in our lives. A lot of letting go. A lot of letting a go. A lot of letting go. There's that scary feeling that, oh my gosh, if I let go, then what's going to happen next? Will I have safety and security? There's and that consequence. There's that consequence left, left brain coming in. What's yeah. going to happen if I let go? But the instruction was let go. Yes. Right? Where did I leave off? Celebrate at this time in history. And I at see this you time, in right, in history. Celebrate. celebrate. I celebrate. And we are to take nothing personally, which is another step. It's kind of like the illumination going to authenticity. Um, taking nothing personally is going into a cosmic level of neutrality. It's a loving neutrality where your buttons are not pushed. Yes. And how do you do that? Well, by what we were talking about, by releasing those things that you are attached to. The cosmos is, is, is dissolving those things that you're not attached to, and you're not even going to know it's gone. So the only ones you have left are the ones that you're still holding on to. Yes. So you get to do the releasing. Yes. And it's, it's just that. Sometimes there's more than that, and there's process to, processes to do. Each is on his own path, at his own pace. It's okay. You're doing nothing wrong. You can make no mistakes. This is all good. Yes, that's right. This is we all always good. say, though, when you let go of the rope, there can't be a tug of war. And so sometimes we have to just let go of the rope. I let love it go. That. I love that. It's one of our favorite images yes. that we like to use on a daily basis. Because then there's the person is just by themselves tugging, tugging on nothing. And, yes. and, and of course, again, it's you. Yes. It's a reflection of you from whatever you have inside of you. And loving that person is loving yourself, loving that item within you that has reflected itself in your world, has realized, manifested itself before you. And uh, I, love, I love realizing that. And I love the way your book brings that out over and over, over and over. Breathe, smile. Yes. The smiling while you're breathing is magic. Yes. And you go into that in book two. Um, but it, it's magic. I mean, imagine standing in front of someone in a situation or in front of a, a, a circumstance. And you can breathe consciously and bring that smile in at the same time. Even if you have to tie it on your head with a bow, just put that smile on your face and everything changes. It's true. There is a neurobiological, uh, what is it, Neuro neurological uh, pathway shift yes. that goes on that opens us to our center, to our divine, yes. and makes us more malleable to the present, yes. which is where we are anyway all the time. 
Yes. Where do we leave off? At this time, we take nothing personally. Yes, least of all ourselves. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I love it that I saw once the Dalai Lama arrived somewhere and he, he got out of his vehicle. And as he was walking up to the doorway, there was a throng of people on both sides of the path. And he went from side to side, just, just tenderly holding hands, laughing the entire way. Mm -hmm. He just laughed and laughed and laughed and went both sides of the path, laughing and laughing. That is cosmic joy. That is love incarnate. That is being in our divine, neutral, loving place. Yes. Um, and I, I don't see where I left off. Least, Least of all ourselves. For the, mo for the moment we do, our spiritual growth and journey comes to a halt. At, at, when we take ourselves personally, when we take something personal. At this time, oh, it's easier to take nothing gotcha. personally, yes, that's it. least of all ourselves. For at the moment that we do our spiritual growth and gotcha. journey comes to So when we take it personally, we're, we're putting an obstruction in our own path. We're blocking ourselves. So don't take anybody else personally. Don't take what somebody else in the world is doing personally. Don't take the messages that other people post personally. Just don't take it personally. And you know what? It will completely change your life. It's when we get into these like push-pull things that we rock our own boat and we lose our center. We have to come to center. In these times, this is what all the great masters taught. This is what Yeshua, Jesus taught. This is the teaching of the ancient Aramaic, which is what book two of 21st century superhuman is all about. So this is exciting times because we have right in front of us, we have a big mirror holding up in our face. What is left that we need to clean off the mirror? That's all and it is. Let's clean our mirror on the inside, and then we will see something different reflected to us in the outside. Just love it. Love whatever comes up. Good, bad, and different, whatever you call it. Just love it, love it, love it. Because the time for the lone wolf is over. Gather yourselves. Banish the word struggle from your attitude and your vocabulary. All that we do now must be done in sacred manner and in celebration. Why? We, we are, are the, the ones, ones we've, we've been, been waiting, waiting for. I love you. <laughs> And that Public means display you. of affection. We are the ones we've been waiting for. It means all of us, each of us, the one that is us. Is she awesome or what? <laughs> I'm the luckiest guy ever to live in this sacred space with this sacred high priestess of the temple. With that, I'm out. Thank you, babe. <laughs> we love you all. Remember to breathe, smile. In love, remember the purpose of the Hopi prophecy. It is a reminder to us to remind us what to do now in this moment, this critical moment of human history. And our yesterdays, I believe these in, on Facebook Live, they'll all flow into each other. Our one from yesterday, we talked about this and we also covered some of the ancient petroglyphs behind it and where this, where this teaching is recorded. So... This is a magical time. This is a beautiful time. We are privileged to be walking on planet Earth in these magical times of great change and to be getting to step up to the level of mastery that can take us into ascension, take us into oneness, take us into the new Earth, take us into harmonization with the truth of our hearts and our beings. <laughs> Aho. Many blessings. Highest blessings all. Love to all. <laughs> Let me get on the other screen here. And we go. And this. <laughs> give us a second. Ciao, ciao. Okay. And live video. See you soon. Lots of love.